exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Madi. And today we have an exciting episode in store for you to join me in the G spot. All right, that is guest spotlight. Abby, don't get no freaky ideas over here. I know, I'm trying to get my <laughs> We have the beautiful, the amazing Abby Del Rosa. And Abby is a radio personality, DJ, and mother to Zion and Zillion. And those are the Cannon Boys. So, Abby, we're going to just, like, get right into the episode. Um, I can't wait to talk to you. Like, I just want to give you guys a little bit of context. This is my friend. I'm not just interviewing um, a regular schmegular, like, <laughs> not to say <laughs> any of my guests are, but this person actually holds, like, a special place in my heart. So I'm going to be coming from a point of view of um, making sure that her heart is protected at the same time, making sure that she's not just educating me, but also educating you guys um, and giving us insight into her personal life. All right. So all I ask is full transparency um, and vulnerability in this. But we trust each other. Yes. So I'm going to bust you out if you're not keeping it real. I know. <laughs> Listen, the first time I met Spicy Madi, we were recording our shows back to back. We had the early morning shifts. And I had a toxic relationship I was going through. Everything was just on the low. I couldn't talk about it, be about it. So Spicy asked me in the studio. I walk in. She's like, oh, hi, you must be new. I'm Spicy Madi. And I was like, oh, nice to meet you. And she's like, so do you have a boyfriend? And I was like, <laughs> actually, I do. She goes, mm, I checked your Instagram. You didn't. She's like, there's no picture. So, the, so there's either one or two things. You're embarrassed to be seen with him or you're not allowed to be seen with him. And I was like... Oh, nice to meet you, Spicy. I'm Abby. So you've always been a straight shooter, which is why I absolutely adore you. And I cannot wait to just get more into dialogue with you. Girl, safe <laughs> to say, I'm lucky you like befriended me. Because yeah. <laughs> anybody else listening would be like, uh-uh, no, she didn't. <laughs> but Spicy, you've always been straight up direct and you always hit the nail on the head. Every time, because I was like, damn, how'd she know I'm not allowed to actually to be in this relationship at all? Like, you knew without even knowing. So you're very, I, I'm excited to just call you my friend. One thing is, I'm going to make sure we, I'm going to force the intimacy. I'm going to make sure we, like, get there. Yes. So, so even if you didn't want to be my friend, you didn't have a choice. I, period. Are we going to be friends? Spicy's going to be your <laughs> friend, period. That's it. Okay, so I am blessed to have you on the show. Yes. Thank you so much. I know you haven't spoken, you know, publicly yet in regards to your personal life, your relationship, your children. So this is definitely, you know, going to be a, an awesome opportunity to get to hear what your experience is right now when it comes to relationship. Yes. So I'm going to start with the spice breaker. Okay. This is something that everyone answers. It warms you up, but you get to share. <laughs> when did you first fall in love with yourself? Um, I'm 32. I'm 31. I'm going to be 31. No, I'm 31. I'm going to be 32. Pregnancy brain. Um, but I don't think I fell in love with myself until I was about 27. So okay. recently, about five years ago. Okay, and so you have to break down that moment. Like, what happened, and how did you come to the epiphany? Like, damn, I'm lovable. I love me. Okay, going back to that relationship. Um, and you seen me through a lot of different seasons, spicy. And that one specific season, I think m it was more so, it wasn't about the person it was about me letting go of my power mm -hmm. and I wasn't walking in my power and I was so exhausted. I felt like everything had just been falling apart and I was trying to figure it out. A young woman in my 20s, what is it? I'm giving of myself. I love my career. I love where I'm headed, but do I really love myself because nothing seems to be working right now? Mm -hmm. And I realized I, I had been giving my power away. And it wasn't until I was desperate for a shift, Madi, that I was like, you know what, let me take a step back. And finally, when I got the courage to leave that relationship is when I started just pouring into myself, deeply pouring into myself where nothing was going to hold me back. Not even my career at the time. I was focused on Abby and growing Abby. I remember this time because I, I feel like was one of the people that was like, let's leave him. <laughs> Like, Period. come on, Abby, we got to get out. We got to get out. Another <laughs> one of those moments that Impact Spicy Madi does bring to the table, or uh, brought to my table, 
was I remember crying to you, Maddie, and mm-hmm. I was like, oh, spicy. We were in the studio again. It's all I surrounded know. by our shows. Like We're <laughs> we going from studio to point three. Yes. <laughs> and it's a hip hop station. And then on the side, we'd be talking about love and career yes. and all that. And I remember you actually laughing in my face. And you said, but with, with the most genuine heart, you said, Abby, you said, until you're actually ready to leave, come and talk to me because you're still going to be on that same revolving cycle. So until you're ready, come and talk to me and I'll, and I'll talk to you. But until then, <laughs> the, the same story, different day, basically. <laughs> and I remember being like, wow, if Spicy feels like that, and I see her only a few days out of the week. What does my heart circle feel like? Yep. How exhausted does everyone around me feel? How exhausted do I feel? How exhausted was I making that person I was with feel? And and vice versa. And I feel like that was one of those moments where I really was like, damn, I'm really not walking in my power. I'm really not loving myself. I'm really just going through the motions. And it wasn't until 27 is when I really decided uh uh-uh, uh I'm selfishly unapologetically going straight yeah. into Abby Abby Delarosa and what the hell I wanted to do with my life. Okay. So let's talk about what you wanted to do with your life okay. then. Um <laughs> cuz I feel like um I watched you go from Ooh. this like <laughs> you know I I'm going to just throw Beyonce's crazy in love out there, okay? (laughs) Where it was the, like, tumultuous relationship. Like, you are, you know, dying for attention. You're fighting with him all the time. You're trying to, you know, like, prove, like, how Mm. he should be seeing you. And trying to prove your love to him, like, 24-7. And you love that boy hard, okay? But not to dwell on him. I just want to say I went from that (laughs) to then also trying to set you up after him. And (laughs) not sure where those relationships went, but... (laughs) But then seeing you all of a sudden um, own and feel empowered in this relationship being with Nick Cannon, Mm -hmm. which I thought was interesting from that choice to that choice because you went from being very much the uh, choose me, only me to the, okay, I'll share you with the world. Okay. How did we make that shift? I could understand where that perspective comes from. Um, especially seeing me as one in one type of relationship and at, and and then seeing me in this extreme relationship yeah. but i have to say like this is probably one of the healthiest relationships i've been in wow okay <laughs> so speak on it i want to hear this i i it's it's it was different i mean there's just so many things that i, I first off I think a lot of people are in polyamorous relationships and don't even know about it because they're being blindsided by the monogamy title. Mm. And then all of a sudden it comes out, your partner has X, Y, and Z amount of partners and you've been lied to and deceited. You know, all these different, different things. And with this person, how can you be upset about somebody who's just walking in their truth and it just, just kind of aligned with my destiny in some way? Okay. So, like, talk to me about then how he wooed you and then how the polyamory came about. Girl, I was actually being wooed by a number of people at the time. <laughs> As you should I be. had suitors. I was living my life. And uh, he just was very alluring. Like, he had this alluring energy to him. Nick has different facets about himself. And, and um, when, you, when I got to know him in a certain, on a certain level... It just was very alluring. He had this alluring, charming energy, but he was also very persistent. He didn't apply okay. pressure. He wasn't, he didn't apply that like tough pressure, but he, it was almost like he allowed me to just be, mm-hmm. but would still like, hey, queen, hey, like, you know, looking forward to seeing you again. Yep. I enjoyed our, you know, our dinner the other night or I enjoyed this. And it was like, wow, that's like, okay, I like the persistent and the consistency that he's showing, but, um, I mean, I was also being suited by some amazing gentlemen as well, Mm -hmm. but something, it was just meant, I, I, I can't describe it. I just feel like some things are divine and they're supposed to come aligned with each other. But there was something about Nick that definitely was meant to happen. Okay. So you have these suitors, right? Mm -hmm. 
he's courting you. What does that courtship process look like, though? Does it look like, you said consistent communication, but then he's also taking you on dates. Mm -hmm. What is he telling you are his, like, relationship goals with you or his intention with you? Um, I think, I don't ever feel like we got super, again, I think everything just happened the way it was supposed to happen. Nick never really sat yeah, Nick doesn't really sit down and be like, this is the plan. This is what our plans are. He's a he's a business oriented man and he has his his way, his different ways of thinking. But I think his actions speak louder than his words do. And in this case, his actions spoke way louder than what his words could ever speak to me. So, OK, so. Entering into the courtship, though, or into the romantic relationship, did you think you were in a monogamous relationship? No. Okay, so you knew we are not in a committed relationship. Um, I didn't know exactly the way he lived his life. I mean, thank God I have some amazing support systems, a.k.a. my sister. Okay, in shout my out life. to Stella. Yes, um, <laughs> she was always just kind of doing research, like, okay, this guy. But she was doing this with every person that was yeah. suiting me, uh, courting me. She was like, listen, this person is like this, this. And she's like, you know he wants 12 kids, and you know he, you know he lives his life this way. And I remember being like, okay, that's interesting, because he's always been in the public eye, obviously but i only knew him in the radio world like yeah we he was at the competitor station i was at the other hip-hop station i didn't really we didn't really align with the same type of people or anything like that so i and i never really knew about his dating life to mm. be very honest so i was just thinking oh my god this is so exciting it's new you know i'm being courted by several other gentlemen who are exciting and new and this is great but it, my sister is the one who really did the whole due diligence and put out a whole, put out a whole book of, <laughs> okay, this is what you're going to get yourself into and this and that. So because of that, and then when I really did my own research with her and, and she's like, so I want you to understand is this school, like, is this what you're going to get into? Do you want to get into that? And I made the, the mindful decision to continue. Okay. So... Your sissy brings to your attention that he wants to spread his seed. Mm -hmm. And you're like, hmm. And I think, too, that that interview he did was actually like a joke. Like he jokingly said, like, yeah, you know, I'm going to have 12 kids. And his, my sister is super like there's truth in There's every power joke in words. And There's power, power in words. words. So, yeah, he definitely is looking for 12 kids in his life. <laughs> and I was like, you're lying. She's like, he says it right here. So I remember being like, okay, I'm going to take take hold of that information and just be mindful now moving forward. Okay. So did we, and when did we say, I'm going to be okay with sharing my partner? Because I feel like that's a, that's a, a shift, right? Like you went from being a one woman mm -hmm. type of man, a uh, one man type of woman <laughs> to now being like okay I'm comfortable with him because, dating other women because I need him to be comfortable with me dating other men that part are we dating other men I mean but right now by default <laughs> I'm pregnant with my third child so it's very there's much. a lot of men that <laughs> will still holler at you with that baby okay that um, bun in the oven Abby I wasn't willing to give up my freedom and, and I was happy to be aligned with somebody who wasn't going to compromise who he was as well. So for me, because of that choice and because I wasn't willing to compromise, I was like, this is this is exactly where I, I want to be. Like, I get to still live. I was taking trips and catching flights and doing things and okay. just having so much fun. I was cautious. I was careful. Mm -hmm. But and I was very mindful about who I was allowing into my life. But. Listen, I don't want no cuffs. Don't cuff me, <laughs> please. So it just aligned. It worked. Okay. My definition of love is giving someone the power to hurt you and trusting that they won't. Mm -hmm. What is your definition of love? Loving somebody for exactly who they are. If you tell, Spicy, you 
tell me you're this person mm-hmm. and that is exactly who you are. I'm going to love you for that person. I'm never, I'm not going to come to you and be like, listen, I can love you for the potential of who you can yeah. be or who I think you should be or see the God in yep. you or, you know, I see that God might have other plans <laughs> for you. No, I'm going to be like, listen, baby, if that's who God made you to be mm-hmm. and you like to pull off all your toenails and eat them one by one, Ooh. I will love you for that. You know, like, okay, weird me out a little bit, but <laughs> I love you exactly for who you say you are. And I hope hope somebody will love me for exactly who who I am and who I need to be and who I'm made to be does Nick love you for exactly who you are yes okay yes I don't um him and I have had these conversations where I'm like listen I really love you I just want to say this Nick changed my life not in a monetary aspect because those things are blessings but that man changed my life where he he gifted me my children. These are gifts that are priceless. And not just that, but he there's a there's a side of Nick that a lot of people don't know. And because of that, I'm forever grateful for the man that he has stepped up in my life to be. I mean, when we met, he still courted me. I was I had just moved back home from my breakup. I was living in mom and dad's house. Like he was coming through with security to Whittier to pick this hey. girl up. Like he was consistent. He didn't expect a change in me. He didn't, ex- he didn't see lack in me and he didn't expect mm. me to be anything else other than Abby, Abby De La Rosa, the fly DJ, <laughs> the radio chick. Like, and that is exactly who, why I'm so grateful to him because men who aren't or haven't been on that level I have already felt like I remember one of my suitors, like he was very consistent in like, oh, what type of heels do you wear? What type of Mm. this do you wear? What type of but wanting to uh, mold me into who he saw. He was trying to like control control your image. Yes. And it was like, "Mm, I don't know if that's for me. And I remember telling Estelle, like, I kind of feel like it's a little controlling, like it's on that route of being controlling. And I've already been in that and I don't want to be in that again. Like, I'll, I'll run far, far from that. And Nick, he never made me feel less than or, or that I lacked anything. And because of that, like, I, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for that. So why do you feel like a polyamorous relationship or an open relationship serves you better than a committed relationship based on your life experiences? For me, I, I would say that I, I'm an open relationship girl, but... For him, he's a monopoly man, which means he definitely can date, mm-hmm. but he doesn't want to see you date. Oh, but so hey, <laughs> it might be, even though he might not like it, he's very respectful of the fact of how I see my life and how I want to live my life. And eventually, I I hope to meet one single person that I decide to change the game for. But it's, I mean we both have this like respectful uh, engagement going on with each other right now. So do you see him as your partner and boyfriend or is he just the father of your children? How do you view him? We're family. We're family. I mean, it's so weird because he's my forever person in the sense that we have kids. Mm -hmm. We have three kids. So he's in my life forever. I have a love for him. I love him. And there's always going to be that attraction because, listen, baby daddy's fine. <laughs> That's why I don't blame nobody, Look, okay? I don't baby blame daddy girl. nobody. <laughs> listen, that man takes off his shirt and you're just like, uh, baby, put your shirt on, okay? No, he's, he's so handsome. He's so good looking to me. We have great chemistry, great sexual attraction. But, you know, I just see, I just see more for myself. Okay, so this is where, like, Uh, the friend in me kicks in okay and I'm like as a friend I want your best interest served at all times right even if if that means um because I feel like there's this because I'm a relationship expert and coach people always want to ask me about you and they're like how do you condone your friend's behavior Uh, are you just gonna let her do what I'm like First off, I want to know what behavior. <laughs> what behavior is that, though? I would like to know what behavior is that. Because- Being in an open relationship, okay. And so, you know, people are opinionated. Now, what their opinions are don't matter to mm-hmm. me. What matters is my relationship with you, and it's 
none of my business or let me say it is my business because I love you, but it is not um, my duty mm-hmm. to monitor or judge your relationship. All I seek through you is you being an amazing friend to me and me being an amazing friend to you. And the choices that you make for your romantic life, those are your choices. Even if it may not go with, you know, what I teach about, um, you know, commitment or trying to encourage me not here to commit, I still have to respect who you are and the relationship choices that you have. But then like the friend in me kicks in and what I do care about is, is my friend's needs being met. Is she being loved the way that she needs to be loved? Is she being healed through her relationship? Is she being treated like the queen that she is? And if those things are happening, I'm good. But if those things aren't happening, we're going to start doing some drive-bys. So (laughs) what is going on? Are our needs being met? Our needs are met. But just like with every season, even in the most monogamous of relationships, even in marriages that I've viewed and I've witnessed, seasons change people change people evolve and i would hope that people evolve yep yep i would hope that you change in a year or two from now yeah for and sure. that you would need a little bit more or that you're looking for something different or that you're changed your hobbies are changing and you want your partner to see that or experience what your new loves are or whatever the case may be so yes my needs are changed are met and when they need to be and when I grow and my mm-hmm. needs grow and when different seasons come and go, we sit, we have a conversation and those needs get spoken about and those needs get met again. So, yes, they're being met 100 percent. So does your partner hear you in that? He's like, OK, I'm here for what you need. Like, I'll show up for you the way that you yes. need. OK, that's beautiful because that's what I care about. Mm-hmm. And if that's happening I'm good, y'all. Like, <laughs> yeah. yes. I'm good as long as you're good. But that's the part that I care about the most. And then when it comes to, like, partnership, do you feel like the children's needs are being met? Because a lot of people will look at it from the, like, well, daddy's not in the home. So technically, like, mm-hmm. based on the Webster's Dictionary or societal standards, you're considered a single parent mm-hmm. if your partner isn't living in the home with you. Mm-hmm. So do you feel like the, your children's needs are being met, him being so busy? Um, you know, when I got to know Nick, I got to know the man that he is and what he represents and what he stands for and the pride and love he has for his kids and the depths of the world he'll go to or the, the ends that he'll go to for his children. Yeah. And that's what actually made me okay with moving forward. I mean, I was in a relationship for five years and never once did I have a pregnancy scare. I have different suitors. I have Nick here. I get pregnant once, miscarriage, and Nick was like, listen, let's try again. Mm. Let's do this again. And I'm like, what, are you sure? But getting to know Nick. Oh, he wanted your that baby. Was, yeah. <laughs> He's like, you don't have a baby Getting by me. to know Nick, <laughs> it was like, you know what? I see what you represent as a father. And, um, and I feel like the world comes so hard on him. Mm-hmm. And they're like, you're creating broken homes. And... And I feel like he's actually creating homes. A lo- for me, myself, I never thought I was going to have children. I mean, I got mm. so sick. I was in the hospital. The doctors mm-hmm. were like, you're not going to have kids. And all of a sudden, I get pregnant by Nick yeah. Cannon. Would I ever think that? No. Did I ever dream of that? No. But it happened, and it was meant. And my babies are the most beautiful. I could cry just talking about them. But my babies are my most pr- beautiful, the best things that ever happened to me in my whole 31 years of existence and I just love him so much and and that's why I'll forever be like I'll forever defend this man because mm. he gave me my children and he created a home yeah and he takes care of his home yeah and he takes care of his children above anything else and he's taking care of your heart yes okay to to He's taking care of my heart, but I also have a duty to take care of my own heart. For sure. Yes. Hello. Okay. Self work. <laughs> yes, Hello. Abby. Yes, you sure do. So this is where like the complexity lies, right? Because he's taking care, it feels like, of a few hearts. Yes. Several hearts. I don't know how many hearts it is at that, this time. That Libra that Libra <laughs> that Libra how many, lover. <laughs> how many hearts are we at now? Five hearts? How many hearts is it? <laughs> You okay, know, so we go we go unspoken on that, but there's some extra hearts on the way. He just loves love, you know. That's what we're gonna leave it as. He okay. just loves love. He's a lover. 
Okay. <laughs> so. I'm gonna I'm gonna let those implications <laughs> come through. You guys can he is a process lover. that. <laughs> okay, so we're not gonna give like an exact count because I feel like it wavers often um <laughs> listen that ain't my business that pays me so i'm just gonna mind mind but he's a lover but he's tending to all of these romantic relationships yeah how does that affect you so situations when you're missing him or when you feel like you deserve attention or when you want his presence but it's with somebody else and you have to see that publicly in the media mm -hmm. um or just via text like is he saying hey i met my other baby mama's house like mm -hmm. what does that communication look like and how does it make you feel um with i'm actually like listen i hope you went and saw your baby mom <laughs> <laughs> no um my relation and i could only speak for my unit um we have a very um i hate that term honest because i just feel like it's like honesty honesty no um i just feel like we've both become very accustomed he's gotten to know me and my views mm -hmm. and respects me and my views and i respect him and his views um but the communication is definitely there but it's also none of my business what what is my business is when he's like around me or you know but you don't he, feel like it's any of your business him spending time with his no, other women? he's a lover. No, he opens up about spending time with them. And, you know, it's a beautiful thing, but I'm not mad about it. I'm just like, OK, when next? <laughs> like, Give me the juice. Tell me the secret sauce to not being insecure or jealous of his time going to other women. What did, what did you have to tell yourself or what did you have to do? I'm human. I get jealous. Yes. At times I get I get I get in my womanly feelings at okay. times, but when you know what you're getting into, number one, and number two, you've been in that dark space where you're jumping through windows and you're breaking through doors to try to catch your lover, texting on his <laughs> phone, you become so just, you're just like, listen, whatever life happens, whatever happens, happens, because I refuse to ever feel that way again. I'm not saying Nick does make me feel that way. He absolutely does not. But what I'm saying is for me, myself, mm -hmm. I don't need to know. I don't I don't care to just the same way I would expect him to not care if I'm moving. But you said he does care. He does. You said care, he's not comfortable with you dating other people. One thousand percent. But I don't expect him to ever speak on. Hey, where are you? Who are you with? Because I don't ask him those questions. So how does so. that double standard work where he gets to hang out with his cheeky boom booms, mm -hmm. but then he's not comfortable or doesn't want you hanging out with your other. Dudes? I think that's just men. Men have this. They're, it's territorial. Mm -hmm. So as a man, as my children's father, I don't think he wants to see any other man in any type but of position. But us as women can be very possessive as well. Uh -huh. I like to say passionate. but Passionate. <laughs> passionate. We can be very possessive. Yeah. So how are you releasing that energy? Because it can oftentimes plague us when we know that you are choosing to deliberately spend your time entertaining somebody else. Mm -hmm. Um, is it a conversation you have with yourself? Is it affirmations? Like, what are you doing? I just love myself. <laughs> I, don't, I can't, I can't speak up. I don't have an exact answer for that, but it really is one of those things where if, Hey, I feel like I need more time mm -hmm. or I need more intimacy, then I bring it to his attention and, and we, we make it work. We fix it and I get what I need. And, but that goes back to my needs being met. But for me, my self-work and self-worth right now is on such a high. I may not feel like my best because I'm pregnant. And, you, like you it, know, you like I might not be the best right now, but I still know my worth. And that's, I feel like being, when you're in a healthy relationship and you're getting, you know, stimulated the way that you're supposed to get stimulated, not just by your lover, but also by your heart circle, by your own life, what you're feeding yourself, what you're taking in on a daily, that all matters. So for me, I just put a lot of focus on myself. You keep saying the relationship is healthy. Everybody has their own definition of what a healthy relationship yeah. entails. What is a healthy relationship? You just let me live. Just let me live. That's just let me live and love the way that I need to live and love. And I know people aren't going to understand that. And I'm not looking for people. to. Sounds like that. no boundaries, no rules, no guidelines, no direction. There's no respect. Non-negotiables. It sounds like no deal breakers. What? How are we getting through like that? There's. I. D I'm not looking for people to really understand the way that I choose to live my life. Mm -hmm. 
but my needs are met. I'm being respected. I'm being loved on and I'm treated very well. So I feel like that is all I really want to give to the public. I don't mm. feel like I need to elaborate more on the depths of why it works or how it works or how I work. I really genuinely just feel like you're at peace. I'm at peace. Okay. I I'm at I believe peace. you. I'm honestly as your like friend because yes I want to give like people understanding because I feel like they don't get the full depths of you. They yeah. only get what they see on social or what the media mm -hmm. wants to feed them. And so I do want them to see like into your heart. So I love the stands that you're taking. I love the, you know, the position that you are, you know, representing for yourself. Uh, but I also am emotionally attached to you. So mm -hmm. even me, I have the like, help me understand mentality. And you don't owe me that. You don't owe anybody anything. Mm -hmm. We are blessed to be hearing this input from you. Mm -hmm. So once again, I am very grateful for you giving this to us. I just want to reiterate that. Mm -hmm. um, but you are you are letting it be known that it works for you and that you do like love yourself and you love the life that you've created for yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to go back and circle back to the women, though. They're not your concern, essentially. It sounds like what you're saying. Like, you don't worry about them. But... Are you operating in a place where you want communication with them or you feel like, or has it happened, where Nick has brought you guys together and you have all discussed like what this dynamic looks like? I am a girl's girl. I genuinely enjoy um, friendship. Yeah. But I am not looking for a sisterly-like relationship with any of these women. I have a sister. I have a heart circle. I have a great circle and band of friends, including yourself. What I am looking forward to is that our children one day will get to get together yes. and that we all can just come together for the best interests at heart because it's all about the kids. It's all about the legacy, which is insane. It's big. It's wide. It's it crazy. Is. It's taboo. But at the end of the day, it was all made in, in love. So I, going back to that question, if there's communication there really is not i'm in i'm at peace with really just with the way nick lives his life and who mm. he chooses to love i'm telling you when you <laughs> nick is a lover this man the more kids a blessing the more women welcome that's basically <laughs> what i have to say about all that abby it sounds like you almost unconditionally love him I do. I mean, I I do. I've come to a place when you know who you are. I don't ever expect anybody to tell me different. And 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 one thing that I always see is like, oh my god, this girl must have daddy issues or anything. Baby, I come from a home where my parents are still very much married. I grew up in a very religious home, in a very churchy home, in a very morally correct standpoint of home. Like I grew up loving my childhood my mom always speaking love into us mm. telling me that we deserve more than what we actually get and wanting us to reach for the stars but they also allowed us to experience compassion allowed us to love somebody allowed allowed us to really express ourselves and be ourselves yeah. and and i think that's probably where my love comes from is my dad my dad was mm. a very loving man where my sister and I were so close in age. We're 11 months apart. Yeah. And we'd be fighting or, you know, we'd be going through it. And he would call us down and, okay, help me understand why you guys are fighting. Help me understand, you know, if, if this is you, tell me right now. And even though it wouldn't be what he liked to hear, he would accept it and he mm. would love it. And I saw that being played out by both of my parents. And I grew up in such a big family. I have 14 uncles and aunts. Oh, wow. So for yeah. me, big families aren't taboo at all. Yep. Listen, if someone isn't scrapping at the family reunion, it wasn't <laughs> a good time. If okay? the police weren't called. If the police weren't called, <laughs> it wasn't a good time. If you didn't have to carry and out your uncle. so <laughs> many different personalities. And I think that that's why in my dynamic, and I'm only speaking for myself, why I'm loving to it and I'm accepting to it because I've been around so much more crazier. Yeah ish in my life that it like this is literally a walk in, a, in the park compared this to this is easy for you this is easy dang i don't think that people have that perception so i love that you're saying this because you are saying some things that were like oh wow okay yeah. we're like i'm shocked by this yeah. so we have you know this 
these parents that have supported, you know, you for a very long time, they want you happy. What was the reaction, though, when you say, like, hey, this is my situation? Or how did they react to even seeing the situ- the lifestyle that you chose? My dad was like, so can we invite the kids to the boys' birthday party? Like, how are we going to get them to know their brothers and sisters, you know? That was my parents' reaction. They're actually very loving towards the situation. And I think that they're looking more so, more so towards the children getting to interact mm. with their brothers and sisters and their soon to be brothers or maybe their future brothers and sisters. So it's it's very much a loving and supporting um, dynamic. I mean, when it comes to my family. So you tell mom like family's expanding, mom. I'm pregnant again. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. <laughs> Why? So we have two babies, mind you. I'm a new mom, so I'm like, oh, that's a lot of work. You had twins. Ab. I had twins. And so we're doing it again. You want, you know, the the you want to expand your family. Um, why do we do it again with Nick? Why not hit me up and say, Spicy, can you set me up? With someone. Baby, that time will come, <laughs> okay? That time will come. Um, no, I, honestly, again, it goes into play of character, character um, choices, his heart posture, who he is as a man. And when I had our children, our first sons, I knew that there could be a possibility, okay, maybe I could possibly get pregnant. Did I? Did I know it would be this soon, though? No, because the kids are only going to be, like, a year and some change apart. But um, it doesn't scare me. Like, it doesn't scare me at all to go into another child with this man. Yeah. Okay, I'm loving this confidence because everyone's like, are you going to have another one, Spicy? I'm like, I don't are know. Are you going to have no, another one? I don't know. But my question is, is there a hierarchy to the women? Is it based on, like, who had his babies? Like, who is first place, second place? Like, how does that work? First off, uh, <laughs> I don't think so, but I will say this. Mariah was wife, so I will bow down to Mariah. Not just because she was wife. But, like, she actually got the ring, but she's Mariah Carey. Right. Like, Please don't come for me, Mariah Tribe. Like, at <laughs> all, I respect the queen, okay? But that has always, even even Nick and I, like, I'm always like, you know, if Mariah were to call you and I was sitting in front of you, I'd be like, baby, pack your shit. You're going back. <laughs> like, you are going back, please. Um, no, I just, there is no hierarchy, but I feel like it could be perceived that way. Everyone always likes to say, like, oh, she's a favorite, and oh, this, and oh, that. And Nick just wants to make sure everybody feels special and loved all across the board, for sure. That's good. How does it make you feel, though, when you hear him talk about another woman like that, who he reveres? That was his wife. That was his wife. I don't know anything about marriage, but what I do know is that that's a sacred commitment. Mm -hmm. That's something that I have yet to ever experience. And what I've seen about marriage, it's a secret covenant. And and that's a relationship I'll never be like, oh, my God, are you talking about your wife again? Like, no, I'm glad you were, like, direly in love with your wife and that you have that reverence towards her because that shows the type of man. Again, that shows the type of man that he was and is, and that was at once a season in his life. And I, again, I'm cool with it. I'm always like, wow, that's really special. Like, that was his wife, so we can't really knock that. How am I going to knock? Yeah, you can't. Spicy, yeah, how I'm like, and you are a queen of marriage and the respect and the for covenant sure. of marriage. For how sure. How can I ever knock that? You can't. For sure. And if we asked Mariah, she would be like, bow down, bees. I'm like, like, tell me where to bow. <laughs> <laughs> tell me where to like, bow, which, Mariah. Which toe or foot should I get? Yeah, guess? tell me where to bow. <laughs> no, but that, again, that goes to his wife, and, and that's something I'll never speak on or I'll never um, – be upset about I actually enjoy hearing his past and what he experienced and the love that he shared for his wife so it sounds like you do value the role of wife and husband yes okay I'm in this forever spicy (laughs) like I'm in this forever this man is not going anywhere this we have children together okay so for me I'm not holding him like you're supposed to I'm not chasing this man like you're supposed to be mine and only mine and I want to be potential wifey I'm like baby that's so beautiful I love it that's what I was going to ask you do we want to be a wife one day one day one day and is it to Nick do you want to be a wife to Nick no I want to be a wife to somebody else <laughs> eventually. Wait, wait, Nick's not good enough to be your husband? It's not that. <laughs> it's just, you know how some people are meant to be. Uh, I believe that you could have partners in your life that 
aren't meant to be foreverly romantic with you or platonic with you or or you know friends it's, again it's seasons it's evolving uh i'll forever have nick in my life as my children's father are we supposed to be together forever clearly god in the universe were like yes y'all are going to be three kids deep you know, you tie together forever but do i feel like that's my soulmate and I don't even like that term. I don't I don't like that. What twin, term do we like? I don't like that twin flame talk, that soulmate talk. I just feel like those are all cop outs, honestly, like because people like to be like, oh, they're my soulmate. So I want to stay in a toxic relationship mm. and this and that. And I don't like any of those. I do like what my girl Spicy Mari. Is that copywritten yet? Uh, I need to, I need that, to copyright it. Please. But I did coin the term purpose mate. Why don't you say it? <laughs> say it one more time for the people in purpose the back. Purpose mate. Purpose yes. mate. And that's a conversation we've had a lot within each other. I really genuinely, my heart is so happy for the fact that I found a purpose mate in my lifetime, like Nick, um, to share children with and to have kids with because he again he the man that he is and the man that he shows himself to be and shows up to be is so you feel like nick has been an intricate part of you discovering your purpose yes. and you feel like you have helped propel his purpose because it has to be mutual i don't i don't know I don't ever want to speak on what I bring to Nick and what I can't because everybody's perception, even my own partner, like Nick's perception about me. I don't know, but we've shared some intimate conversations and I know what I and how I influence. Yeah. Have you enriched his life? Yes. Yeah. I know in the ways that I've influenced and those are a little too personal I just, okay, I gotta save some. I guess myself. you gotta save some stuff for the bedroom. Those are, and those are, those <laughs> are my personal conversations with this man, and, and I share and open myself up to him the way that I hope that the world doesn't get to see. And I love that he only knows it, or he gets to know my heart and my heart and my heart posture on a daily basis mm -hmm. towards him and towards others. So, um, yes, but he. So has, if he proposed, Abby, you would say no. Yeah. Wow. But it's because I love him enough to say no. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love you so much. I'm, I'm going to say with no. You. <laughs> like, that's what it is. Um, I just feel like. I just I that's just how I feel. And this sounds very independent because I don't know if I would say would, would we say this the rest about the other mamas? Are they hoping and vying to have a ring on it? I don't know. I, I can't speak for them, but I could only speak for myself and. I really look at Nick and have a lot of respect for him and love for him as a person that he is. And um, that's why I would say no, if that makes I, actually that doesn't make sense. But that's OK. I'm not here to make no, sense. No, I anybody. get what you're saying. Okay. And I feel like everybody gets what you're saying. Tell me, would he be mad or come for me? If I try to introduce you to your husband, no, no. like would I have like a I target Nick, on my back? Honestly, I think Nick would would um, actually laugh at the challenge. He'd be like, "Okay, Nick, yeah, I'm coming I for would, your girl. I'm coming I for would, her." I think he would be like, "I laugh at whoever tries to come in and and you know try to step in my shoes." Like he's you know just like a man. Like no man wants to see another man in any type of position with a woman that they're having children with. What? But he's very respectful and he would be understanding. And when that time comes, I know he's going to be like, "Listen, okay, this is what you want to go experience it, go be it, go do it. And I'll probably, I'll be waiting here. Not even probably. I know Nick will be like, I'll be right here when you're back. But so we believe our husband out, is out there and he exists. Yeah. Okay. What are those qualifying factors for the male audience who may be hoping, you know, to I, I really, get a bid in? I wish I could even bring those to the table, but I'm still evolving. I'm, I'm going to be a mom of three. I'm not going to be the same woman that I am in a few months from now than what I am sitting in front of you. Yeah. So when that time comes and I'm actually level-headed and my kids are, you know, a, a little bit older, then I could be like, all right, this is the man that I need. This is yeah. what I bring to the table. But I'm still learning myself. I am a work in progress. I am so imperfect that it makes me mm -hmm. perfect. And that I am so knowing of my faults and my defaults that I'm okay with who I am right now and, and where I'm at right now. I'm happy with where I'm at. And I embrace all that because I'm, 
every day I'm a work in progress. I look at my kids and they're looking at me like, mom, you didn't do this again. <laughs> mom, you know? So I fall short every day of being my highest self. But I know that there's lessons in all this craziness. Yeah. And for that, I know when that time comes, I'll be able to be like, all right, spicy. I'm so sure in what I want and who I want now and what it is that I bring to this table. Ooh, yes. So here's the paper. Yes. Because I, I feel like a lot of women are like, yes, I want that husband. And then they get husband material mm -hmm. and they're Speak like, on it. but it's not, uh, but I'm not ready for it. And this is not who I am. And this and that. And I want to be so sure yeah. that there is no blinking the same way I'm looking at you and not yeah. blinking at my yes and no answers. I want to be so sure that when that man comes, that I am my full, complete self, that I am the mo the mother that I need to be, that I'm the woman that I need to be, that I see myself yeah. as, honestly, because I have a vision of my highest self that I'm not at yet. Yeah. And until that's reached, what I'm learning then, okay, like, you know how men, men, if they're not financially set, yeah. financially stable, if they're they don't secure. have secure, mm -hmm. they're not going to be prepared for any type of yep. woman. They might love a woman. They might be able to spend money on one, court them, but they're not going to be ready to yeah. love lockdown and be like, have my heart. They're going to be like, look, I got money to go chase and a bag to get and businesses to start. And with women, I feel like it's more emotional. It's more self. Mm. It's more, it's more about your queendom yeah honestly and what you have done because now that I, uh, spicy we've attained certain levels in la going on radio interviewing yeah. so many people and then you think what's next and when you do feel like you're at a halt you don't feel like you're at your best self yep. you don't feel like you're, so you're looking forward to the progression yes okay. 1, and i love i love how like self-reflective you are and how self-aware you are yeah. abby like it really sounds like you are making these decisions from a clear conscious like mindset yeah and so you know and this is music to my ears that i get to set you up when that time comes oh my <laughs> god listen with and I'm not set, stuff, you said it yourself it ain't nick so i'm like okay great that leaves room for the hubby that we get to introduce yes, you to yes. <laughs> well a spicy your track record is a uh, pure walking down the aisle-ness so spicy will definitely i have no doubts in my mind spicy you would find me the right one yes so you I, I kind of spilled the beans by like saying on here that the baby on the way is nicks yeah. <laughs> yes. and you confirmed it with like answering my question yes. Yes. But how did he handle the news when you told him? Like, what was that like? We were at the zoo. Honestly, we were at the zoo. Aww. And uh, the boys had just made um, some artwork. We'd just done some sensory artwork for their dad. And he was leaving out of town again. So I, like, packed up all the gifts and stuff. And I was like, okay, the boys have gifts for you. And I put, like, the pregnancy test and, like, this little, like, watch. What you would get, like, a watch in. Uh -huh. And um, he's like, oh, my God. I, like, framed the pictures and he like open and Nick is a big sweet tooth person. Mm -hmm. He loves candy. So he sees all the candy and then he sees like this box on the bottom and he gets any and like he opens it and his eyes just like open so wide and I was like, I'm pregnant. And he's like, he's like, Congratulations. And he just like gives me a hug and he's like, Are you excited about it? And so he's asking you questions. Yeah, he's like, Are you excited? Are you ready? And I was like, Are you excited? We just had our twins and he's like, Of course. Like mm. he's this you know he's very fruitful so he's he's is he now he's, breaking he's, news he's very fruitful <laughs> but um that's one thing that i absolutely uh am grateful for that he's never and i've seen women in monogamous relationships where their partners like yeah it's not the again. response that they're looking for what like this and that and this man was like yes congratulations are you are you excited listen i'm calling you i'm texting you on the way when's your first doctor's appointment like how can we do this are you are you gonna do natural birth oh he's in it like he's oh my god involved. yes he's like he's really hands-on on like okay so do you need a doula do you need a midwife do you need you know x y and z um have you gotten your pregnancy pillow like he's very very in tune with the process so that's what I'm grateful for. Okay, I love that you you're you're bringing peace to me. Yeah, to me as your friend. I'm oh like, my god. Okay, 
Wusa. And Abby, you are a great mom. So I'm super excited for the baby on Thank the way. Because I, call, I call you all the time or text you. And I'm like, <laughs> Prince is sick again. What do I do? What is the uh, prescription I'm supposed to be giving him? What's yeah. wrong with him? How Thank do I put him you. to sleep? Like, you definitely have been a trooper through even having Thank to you. deal with me and my new momness. So <laughs> I appreciate you. And I'm super excited for the baby. Like, 100%. So, okay, I, I know that you have revealed a lot to us, okay? Yes. The gender of the baby has not been revealed. So we will let that remain okay. uh, remain a secret or, you know, on your own time frame. But if I can give a hypothetical question of what advice would you give your daughter when it comes to relationships and how to choose a partner if you do have a girl? Live. Just live your life. Live your life. I have lived an amazing life, and I'm only 31. I'm excited to see what is ahead of me. Live. Be compassionate towards others. And don't compromise. Mm. Just uh, date. I think women forget to date. Yeah, for sure. A lot of eggs are always in one basket. But what I've learned is when you're really in love with yourself and you're really just living your best life, Love finds you. Like, you don't go and search for love. Love will find you when it's supposed to happen. And that's one thing that I hope one day I would be able to teach even my sons. Yeah. Is just live your best life and just uh, be as authentic as you can. I'm so happy. It sounds so taboo, but, like, when my kids get older, I, I'm really excited for them to say, hey, my mom and dad lived the way that they wanted to, and they did it mm. to the best of their ability, and they loved us. Are you prepared for that when they come at you and they're like, the kids at school said this? And, yes. you know, how are you going to, like, explain your guys' dynamics? Um, I I am ready to explain to my kids uh, the honest truth mm -hmm. in that their dad is an amazing man and he's a lover. And just because he has, they have X, Y, and Z amount of brothers and sisters, that doesn't mean that he loves them any less or that, you know, he loves mom any less. Mm -hmm. I feel... I'm excited for them to know that their dad did it his way mm. and that they can do it their way. Question. When I find your husband, does he get to also still have an open relationship in that dynamic or will you want commitment? You know then? what? Um, it's so funny. I've been asked this. I would be open to another open relationship. Maybe not in the expand, like in the <laughs> huge format that we're in the right canon now, universe? not the in canon the, universe, <laughs> not in the, you know, gen X way that we're in, <laughs> but even if it's in like a more, um, smaller stage, like I probably, I could be open to it, but I also have experienced monogamy. Now I've experienced open relationships on my end mm -hmm. i've experienced a monopoly relationship mm. i've experienced so many different types of ways of yeah. love so when i find that person and however they choose to live their life then we'll cross that bridge together mm. so you will decide upon encounter yeah okay fellas submit your application to info at the spicy life you know com. What's so, spi what's so <laughs> funny spice is i always think about all these like women who date nba players and they're like they're all cheaters in this net and i'm like that would be a cakewalk like you have no <laughs> idea like i would literally laugh at dating an nba player like do you not know the <laughs> level of playing field that i'm on right now like you gotta come so correct that sh that mm, spicy i would laugh at all like when There's i hear these stories it. i'm like <laughs> child's play that's all child's play compared to what i've experienced but it's getting me ready for that next level of love and whoever i'm supposed to love next Agreed. I feel like if you can handle a lot of these relationship challenges, yeah. oh my gosh, you can handle a lot, Abby. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. You can teach us a few things or two, okay? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe one day I'll come out with a book or something. I don't know. Who knows? Oh, I'm sure it's going to come. I'm Who sure it's going to come. Okay, you have to let everybody know, like, where they can find you, let everybody know, you know, uh, if they want to follow you or get more info or insight into what's going on with your life, you know, reveals that you'll be yes. giving, all that kind of stuff. So I did start at OnlyFans. It's become like my diary. I just put more personal experience on there, my personal outings on there. I'm very open on my Instagram about my children. It's more mommy based, mm -hmm. but everyone can find me at Hi Abby Delarosa. It's who I am. It's who I've been and who I'll always be.
Oh, and you guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my IG at yes, Spicy Yes, I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> you guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my IG at Spicy Madi. Go to the spicylife.com, click and subscribe. Uh, share this episode with a friend. Get enlightened, spread the love, and there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy Life.